Ink Ribbon. We all know about Resident Evil 1.5 at this point, but did you know there was also an unfinished version that happened between 1.5 and 2? And that version had a ton of changes. I found a whole bunch of stuff that will be in a separate video, but today we're going to look at the unused backgrounds from that version. Just for context, these are found in several early versions, mainly the Japanese trial version and a leaked 1997 prototype. Originally I was going to skip over most of these because some of them are so subtle that it may as well not matter, but I decided for documentation purposes that I'll be showing all the changed backgrounds. Some of them are really interesting and some of them are not. Most of them aren't. <laughs> but regardless, we're going to go through all of them. Because some of the images and changes are so subtle, I will be fading between them on and off to make it easier for you to see the differences. So let's get into it. Here are the unused and changed backgrounds from Resident Evil 2. The shot of Kendo's where the zombies have broken through the glass exists with the glass still intact, but it's never used. In the room before the liquor hallway, there's a close-up shot of the flag next to the locked desk, showing a variation of the RPD logo. The diamond key door leading to Marvin's office seems to have been changed, originally being different and having some sort of mechanism next to it, probably an unused puzzle as well. And fun fact, the version of this door can still be seen in several versions of Resident Evil 3. There is an unused angle in the evidence room where the camera faces the opposite way. An unfinished shot of the evidence room can be found in the files. There is an alternate angle of the cutscene with Marvin that was made but never used. Interestingly, there is a close-up shot of the darkroom table, which would have been great because it's cool to finally see what's in there. An earlier version of the Red Jewel statue is unused, which is also missing the infamous locked door. It's hard to make out, but this seems to be the statue from the art room where you insert the two red jewels. It's also worth mentioning this may be from the trial edition of 2, where the door was also in a different spot. This shot at the end of the stars hall was altered so that the grate is open. It's subtle and hard to tell, so here's the before and the after. There's also an unused shot of Chris's desk drawer opened, and from what I was able to find there was also data in the game suggesting you had to find a key to open his desk. There's another shot in the stars room that wasn't in the final game, but was used in the trial version as an alternate shot to reveal Ada. The back of the first floor east office has an unused shot where the door is missing, replaced instead by a shelf. But this zoom shot implies that the player was going to examine something. It could have also been an alternate shot for the camera panning up to reveal Ada. An alternate shot from the second floor mezzanine overlooking the main hall went unused. There are also some early shots of the third floor balcony of the RPD that show a bit of what early previs renders looked like. There's a variant of the crow hallways where the dead officer is missing. There's an alternate close-up of the helicopter crash in the hallway while it's still on fire. In the autopsy room, there seems to have originally been body bags laying around, but were removed, possibly implying zombies would have come out of the body bags like they did in Code Veronica. The locker in the weapon storage room next to the one where you get the side pack and the machine gun has an unused texture, implying it was openable at one point or another. From what I was able to find, originally you had to find a key that could only be used once, so you had to choose which locker to open. There's a different close-up of the desk in the power room an early version of the room where Leon gets the magnum, an alternate close-up of the stairs where Leon reunites with Ada, an alternate version of the room with the loud mysterious thud that I still cannot figure out what that is to this day. Does anyone know? The early version of the spot next to the tram didn't have the flare gun thing. One of the most interesting changes is the removal of this big bloody hole in the walls in the halls that you pass through with Ada or Sherry. When examined, the text just says there's a hole, so who knows what this was supposed to be. The area before the turntable has the slightest difference in detail, but also has an unused shot of an early render close-up of the barrels. An early render of the small balcony leading to the security camera room. An unused shot of the tram which would have been very helpful during the boss fights with William. A close-up of the desk in the security room showing floppy disks in all their glory. The shot of the fuse making machine that I wish we all had in our kitchens to make sandwiches has the base removed, which you can't see regardless. An unused shot of an early render in the central lab room. The master elevator in the labs has a bit of an overhaul with various changes. 
The train interior originally had blacked out windows, changed to add visibility to the tunnel ahead. Something interesting here, not only is there an unused version of the heliport for the Honk and Tofu scenarios, but I didn't realize the heliport is actually different from the main game. And lastly, the train was originally planned to have another car, as seen by the doors at the end, and they were removed. There's also an unused shot showing a hole in the ceiling. So there you go, those are all the unused backgrounds I found, and I'm trying to get my next video done on the prototype as fast as possible. This was actually going to be in that video, but it ended up being way too long, so I have to split it up into parts. So consider this the appetizer for that video. I think Resident Evil fans are going to be really excited about it, because there is so much changed, and um, yeah, you'll, you'll see. Sorry, I'm getting excited. But anyway... Uh, for now, let me know what you think of these backgrounds and if you have any theories or ideas of what some of these changes were or what they were originally supposed to be, uh, let me know in the comments. Until then, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.